Another way that we can talk about or classify behavior of different kinds of polymers is how they behave or respond to changes in the surrounding environment. Uh, and we're going to talk about, in particularly, uh, this response in, with respect to changes in temperature. But I just want to remind you that there are some other kinds of uh, reactions or interactions that polymers can have with the environment. We already talked about degradation uh, in the context of polylactic acid, uh, where remember that when the material is uh, exposed to the environment, uh, a high moisture content, for example, uh, for a long period of time, that actual bonds can be cleaved along the polymer chain. Uh, so it's basically chopped up into smaller and smaller components and, and degraded in that manner. Uh, this can happen in other ways. You might notice when you leave a plastic uh, material out in the sun for a long time, uh, its color changes. Particularly if it's white, you can see that it turns kind of a yellow, uh, yellow color. Uh, and this is a result of another uh, photochemical interaction that's occurring with the environment. In this case, the UV light uh, from the sun's uh, irradiation is breaking uh, chemical bonds also that are altering uh, slightly the structure of the material. Uh, especially near the surface of the part, uh, to give it uh, a different appearance. But here, I want to focus specifically on how polymers respond to changes in temperature. We can distinguish between two main types of behavior that polymers display in response to changes with temperature. And we can classify those as either thermoplastics or thermosets. Thermoplastics become soft and flow at high temperatures, and then harden when they're cooled down to low temperatures. Thermosets, on the other hand, are rigid, and they become set or cured at high temperatures, and then they remain solid uh, for the rest of the time. So in other words, uh, you can reheat a thermoplastic to remelt it, and then cool it down again, and it will harden again. And you can do this procedure multiple times. A thermoset is not able to do that because once it becomes rigid or set at high temperatures, it remains that way. So when you heat it up again, it's going to stay set. Uh, it's not going to be able to be remelted uh, and rehardened uh, after the first cycle. So for example, um, thermoplastics are used widely in molding operations uh, where you can heat up the material uh, to uh, the point where it melts and flows uh, and then do the molding and cool it down uh, to get the finished part. Uh, but here that uh, can't be done with thermosets because this hardening is irreversible. You can do some specialized uh, molding operations where you do the, uh, the setting process uh, as part of the molding process, but uh, you can't reheat it once it's set uh, and remold it. So as a result, the end use for thermoplastics is typically going to be at low temperatures, uh, whereas thermosets can be used at high temperatures because they will retain uh, their rigid structure uh, even when they're heated up. Thinking about how this connects with properties at the molecular level, uh, thermoplastics are typically linear and branched kinds of polymers. Uh, for example, like polyethylene, uh, you know, uh, we talked about high density and low density polyethylene, that's an example. Uh, thermosets are predominantly network or liquid crystalline polymers. So a network polymer, remember we talked about the fact that these crosslinks form uh, that hold the chains together to maintain the structure. Uh, and if those can't be uh, those bonds can't be broken upon reheating, then uh, the material will be a thermoset. Okay, so we can think about uh, summarizing this classification of polymers uh, in terms of thermoplastics and thermosets. Uh, and then uh, within thermoplastics, we talked about the fact that uh, when these materials are reheated, uh, they can engage in a transition that's either amorphous uh, because they have a, a disordered state uh, in the solid phase, uh, or crystalline, where they have an ordered state. And the nature of these thermodynamic transitions upon heating uh, is different. Uh, amorphous polymers have a glass transition, uh, and crystalline polymers have a melt transition. And that we'll talk about those details more uh, later in the course. Thermoset materials cannot be um, uh, melted, I guess, in the sense that they don't flow or soften when they're reheated. Now, there's also an intermediate uh, classification that I wanted to uh, talk about briefly, and that's elastomers. So elastomers kind of fall in between these thermoplastic and thermoset uh, domains. They're cross-linked or network polymers, uh, but they're not rigid like thermosets. They can be deformed. 
Uh, and this deformable nature is kind of what we think about when we think about rubbers, this rubbery behavior. We think about a rubber ball. Uh, we can deform it uh, by applying a force, but when we release the force, the material will retain or uh, regain its original shape. But these materials can be both uh, thermosets uh, or thermoplastics, depending on the nature of how this network is formed. Again, if the network is formed by chemical bonds that are permanent, uh, then this will be a thermoset. So for example, if you heat up an elastomer, it's not going to melt and flow, or it's not going to soften and flow. Uh, it's going to remain uh, a, a connected network. But there are uh, some classes of elastomers that are thermoplastics, meaning that you can heat them uh, and they will soften and flow. And these are called thermoplastic elastomers. They're usually copolymers uh, in some cases, uh, some examples are styrene butadiene styrene or styrene ethylene butadiene styrene. Uh, and these are interesting materials because, you know, they are rubbery uh, when they're uh, solid, but they can be heated, melted, and shaped uh, just like uh, thermoplastic materials. Craton uh, is a brand name uh, for some of these uh, materials. So these are used in many applications like, um, uh, you know, shoe soles for uh, athletic shoes. Uh, pressure-sensitive adhesives, uh, things like that. Uh, and you might wonder, you know, well, how can this be uh, melted if it, if it has a network? Well, uh, the idea is that it it's forms a network when it's solid, but it's not a permanent network. So these are copolymers. And remember, we talked about copolymers. We said that these different monomer domains can have different properties. So in this case, um, these styrene blocks are insoluble uh, they don't want to mix with the uh, surroundings, and then the ethylene uh, butylene mid blocks uh, are soluble. And these are in a matrix, like an oil sort of oil based matrix. Uh, so, in that kind of environment, then the styrene domains kind of want to cluster together. So, you have styrene domains from neighboring chains that cluster together and effectively form junction points that behave like cross links, but they're not permanent chemical bonds. So, when you heat up the material, uh, it can flow uh, and be molded just like a, a regular thermoplastic. So that kind of, uh, that kind of arrangement can, uh, can be useful depending on the kind of application that you have in mind.